Hello and welcome to the Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is Traffic Safety Thursday. On a Monday. On a Monday. <laughs> yeah, let, let's confuse them even more. <laughs> so we are pre-recording Traffic Safety Thursday. We are on a dreary Monday sitting in the studio. So we yeah. are in the studio. So we're live as we're recording, but it's not live as people are listening. Yeah, it may be sunny today, but, but in, it's not today. In reality... With the number of people that listen to the podcast, I never really know what day it is. <laughs> or if it's day at all. Show. It may That's be true. night. So. I have one very strange listener who listens to my show to put him to sleep at night. <laughs> yeah, well, don't even. Don't. No, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> hey, I'm Lieutenant Warren Gosno with the Frederick County Sheriff's Office. I'll just introduce myself. How is my favorite sheriff doing these days? He said to give you a hug, so <gasps> I haven't checked that off the list yet, but we've been busy catching up. We're both wearing orange today. So. I, I noticed that you when I even, came you, in. You didn't even mention well, it. Well, at first I was shocked because you weren't in uniform, and then I remembered that the reason that we are recording in advance is because you, I guess, are on vacation already? No, I, I'm working right now. I'm getting ready to head to Richmond as we speak. I'll be back by the time the show airs. This is so confusing. <laughs> Welcome to I, my I, time machine world. I have faculty meetings in Richmond for classes that I teach across the state as part of law enforcement and, and prosecutors continuing education. So I'm getting ready to head down there. When I get back Wednesday, then I'm loading the camper up. The guys are coming over Thursday morning, and we're heading to Talladega, Alabama. And then, yes, <laughs> I'm not on vacation, but I'm gone for a few days. I am totally off duty. So, yeah, today technically I'm working, but not in uniform. Got some other things to do. That also answers the question that Tim asked me last night when he said, why are you recording in advance? I said, Gaz is going to Talladega. He's going to be gone for the show. And he goes, is he driving? Is he loading in up the a race? camper? Oh, and in I the said, race. Okay. you know, I don't know if he I know he has a camper, but I yeah. don't know if he's taking the camper. So there you go, honey. There's your answer to the question. We've been going for a few years now. We've worked our way from the edge, I'd say the inner edge in the infield, to the outer edge. We're now at the fence line between turns three and four. We've seen some Nice action there. When cars aren't supposed to get together in racing, but you know the fans love it when they do. <laughs> and so we've had a few crashes happen right in front of us that I've caught on camera before. So we sit up on the camper and watch the race. So, yes, taking the camper this year, I think we're going to have a total of eight guys down there. One of my buds has rented a camper in Tennessee that we'll pick up along the way. So we're going to have two spots down there. Ooh. But, yeah, that, it'll, I digress, though. People aren't <laughs> tuning in to hear about my personal activities, and I don't want to tell them too much they, well, about my personal kind of activities. Are because now they know they're not going to run into you on the road. That's for okay. Any my reason. my Your team, team is going to get them, but you're my not team is get still them. here. <laughs> and as usual, you know, give them a shout out. They're still going to be carrying the torch. They're still going to be getting things done. You know what a rough patch we've had over the last few weeks when it comes to traffic related crashes and injuries and fatalities. And now school's back in session. It's going to be getting darker earlier. It's already starting. I mean, it's like well, a little bit after seven. Weather. We've had this. I had to go to Mount Jackson a few weeks ago and teach a class from 530 to 830. And the fog mm. on the way home. I have driven Route 11 to Mount Jackson to Newmarket dozens and dozens of times. It was really difficult to see. I actually caught myself driving slower, which seems what? counterintuitive to how oh. my brain works. So, God's was right. This works. <laughs> it's like, hey, I went to Lynchburg last week. Week to do a presentation for the Virginia Association of Chiefs of Police, and it was it was dreary out. It wasn't raining or anything yet, but when I got up to the top of Afton Mountain, you think I was in Sleepy Hollow, right? I mean, it was fog everywhere, and it was a thick fog. They have that scenic overlook where you can park and look at Nelson County in the valley. Not on that day. It was gone. Yeah. So, yeah, it was kind of eerie, and then you come down out of it, and after a little while, it was, it was back to being cloudy but not foggy. I'm like, that mountain life, that's got to be something <laughs> if you actually lived on the mountain. I want to ask you about something you mentioned earlier and then again just now. So when you're teaching, mm -hmm. is that part of the job, or is that something that you like to do so you volunteer for it? How does teaching at the academy and speaking and making presentations, how does all that fit into your job as a whole? As my job, I'm the traffic safety coordinator for the sheriff. And so not only do I take care of certain pieces of equipment and in-house trainings for radars, LIDARs, 
Alka sensors, which are the little handheld breath test instruments that we use along the shoulder of the road, spike strips, things like that. I make sure that the deputies and, and shifts have what they need for traffic enforcement duties. A part of that as well is I do teach at the academy. I'm a general instructor. I'm a speed measurement instructor. I go to the academy. I can teach law enforcement in service, meaning folks who are already certified and have jobs continuing education, Mm -hmm. or I can teach incoming classes from the beginning. That's all part of the job that that you're asking as as the lieutenant and, and traffic safety coordinator. The presentations I give to HOAs, to high school students, that's all part of the job. You tie in the fact that I'm also the public information officer, things that I talk about with you here. This is part of the job, the media relations. When it comes to teaching outside of our jurisdiction, some of the courses that I help teach, they are a part of my job, but I'm teaching in conjunction like with the Commonwealth Attorney's Services Council. We teach both law enforcement and prosecutors about law changes and ongoing efforts in preventing impaired driving. Those two classes are advanced DUI, which you know is one of my Mm -hmm. things that that I strive to to educate everyone about, and now DUID, which is driving under the influence of drugs. You look at the fact that marijuana has been legalized or decriminalized in Virginia, and they're ramping up to further promote – how you can go about obtaining marijuana and THC. Right now, the law is very funny. You're, you're able to possess a personal use amount, but you're not allowed to buy or sell technically. How are you supposed how to? How are you getting you, that personal yeah. amount if you can't buy it? But <laughs> with this, we're going to see an increase oh, yeah. in impaired driving due to those people who are consuming edibles or or using marijuana or taking THC in whatever form that they're taking it. And, and for anybody that wants to say, well, I'm a better driver when, when, when I'm using, Are you? you may think that, but, but you're truly not. It, it's just like... I'm a better bowler <laughs> when I've had a few drinks, but well, that's that, measurable. <laughs> and I think, I think that may be because your body relaxes you're not, and you don't Give, you don't care. Yes, that's true. You know, it's so you, you're not up here in your mental that's status. True. And, I, and that bowling ball weighs what seven pounds, <laughs> and your vehicle weighs thirty four hundred pounds. A little bit of a difference. There, there is. <laughs> and, and you know, folks, we use humor to, to draw you in before we give you the serious message. But we're going to see those stats go up. We're already starting to see more crashes, and people are more willing to let you know that. They've taken or consumed or smoked, whatever the case, just like they are with beer. But it's always, I've had two beers. I've had two drinks. The thing with the consumption of marijuana, whether it's your cup of tea or not, it's never going to be mine. I just, smoking in general, it's never going to be my thing. And and so whether it's your cup of tea or not isn't the point. People who have been consuming since before they were allowed to are feeling a certain sense of freedom. And so with that, you're going to find that some of them may enjoy it a little more often than they were before because they don't have that fear. They don't have that anxiety about, hey, I, I enjoy this, but I can't afford to lose my job or whatever. What we're seeing is now we have some people that are getting behind the wheel, though, after consuming and not realizing that this still has an effect on you. Mm-hmm. That, that's the whole reason for doing it. You can say it's a natural <laughs> herb, it can be it should be legal, it should be free, whatever. But the only reason you're doing it is it has an effect on you. And so that effect when it turns into impairment behind the wheel is going to be an issue just like alcohol would be. And so I can tell you when we do these classes, not only are we educating the law enforcement officer, because there are certain restrictions in legislation now that if you walk up to a vehicle on a traffic stop and you smell the odor of of marijuana, you cannot, based on just that odor, further an investigation for, let's say, a possession of marijuana. Really? Yeah, the legislature has said you cannot continue an investigation based on the odor alone. So a lot of law enforcement officers are like, well, I can't do anything then. Well, no, you can. And that's what we teach ah. is why have you made the stop? Did you stop the vehicle because it was doing 90 and a 70? 
because one of the things, Janet, people don't realize, people under the influence of marijuana and THC tend to drive faster, not slower. It's not the laid back, yo, man, I could sure <laughs> use some Cheetos right now. It, it, no. Is that a Cheech or a Chong? It's neither <laughs> one. I, I don't want to step into that realm. I'll stay, I'll stay in my cultural diversified lane. But it, it's not that laid back sense. The marijuana, the THC, starts having an effect on time and distance perceptions. And so the person under the influence impaired right now by that consumption is thinking that they're going slower when they're really not. Ah. Okay? And so these are some of the things that are starting to come out now because now you're able to get into some studies. And we talked about that a couple of months ago, that you need that data and those studies out there to be able to form logical opinions and understand why people act the way they do in these certain situations. So we teach the officer, hey, why did you stop them? Was it excessive speed? Were they weaving in and outside of their lane? And now you walk up and you have that odor. That's a secondary. See, you, you now have things you're compiling together. You're going to take your training, which we're giving you, and your experience, which you're getting on each of these stops, and you're going to put that together and formulate and further your investigation. So to answer your question, those classes, I am still doing part of my duty as the traffic safety coordinator for the sheriff's office, but the sheriff has allowed me to also go around the state and help other members of the faculty who are other police officers and prosecutors from throughout the Commonwealth to teach these valuable lessons so that we're all working together, we're all on the same page, Mm -hmm. working from the same script, doing the same things, so that when it comes to court, we have solid cases. Correct. And we talked a little bit about that before we started recording, is that there is an expectation, both from law enforcement and from those that sit on the bench, to make sure that everybody is working together Mm -hmm. for the greater safety of the community, not necessarily a one-off of someone who's been charged with something and maybe has a super sad story. Well, in the one class that we teach that's the week-long DUI class, it's recommended that a law enforcement officer come with a prosecutor teammate from the same jurisdiction. So that the officer is taking information back to his side of the playing field and the prosecutor is taking information back to their side of the playing field. And then when we come together as a team, offense and defense, we're able to complete the game to keep the analogy going. And so it's very interesting and very valuable training. So, yes, it's a part of my job. I am not working separately or apart from the sheriff's office. Sometimes I'm working within the sheriff's office role within our jurisdiction, and then sometimes I'm on loan (laughs) to cover other parts of the state. Let's take a break. All right. We're at that time. We come back. We'll talk a little bit about some weather-related driving. We touched on it a little bit a few minutes ago. And Halloween is just around the corner, so goblins and ghouls are going to be all over our streets. Can we do some safety tips for that in we the can. next segment? We right. shall. We're going to do all that when we come back. We are in the studio recording, not live today, with Lieutenant Warren Gosnell. It is Traffic Safety Thursday. He, of course, is representing my favorite sheriff and the Frederick County Sheriff's Office. We're going to come back and talk more with him in just a couple of minutes. This Saturday, Henry Mueller will change the world. He has no idea that's what he's going to do. He only knows that he went to JustServe.org and signed up to spend time at a senior center Saturday morning. As he browsed through service opportunities in his own community, he remembered the words of Paul to the Galatians, by love serve one another. Little does Henry know that Saturday morning, he'll end up speaking to one senior in particular who hasn't seen his family in several weeks and is feeling especially lonely. Henry doesn't know the short time he'll spend with this man will lift his spirits, cheer his heart, and make his life just a little better. Through love and service this Saturday, Henry Mueller will change the world. See the difference you can make. Sign up for service opportunities in your community. Visit JustServe.org. Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is Traffic Safety Thursday. Lieutenant Warren Gosnell is in the studio with me. He, of course, is from the Frederick County Sheriff's Office. We are recording in advance. We're sitting here on Monday, just a little bit before lunchtime. Everybody is listening, obviously, on Thursday. A few, not everybody. 
on the radio. Yeah. People are listening Again, a few minutes after noon on Thursday. Someone could be listening to this in 2025. That is true. Somebody could go back. Would you believe you can go back and listen to, and you're going to appreciate this because this involves you. So all of the podcast episodes for The Valley Today from the first show I did, May 16th, 2016, are on the feed. Mm-hmm. You can go to thevalleytodaypodcast.com and they're all there. But I also had access to the audio from the show where I was the <laughs> guinea, pig. guinea pig for one of our live alcohol labs. And so that audio is actually on there prior to my taking over as host. So people can listen. I listened to it a couple of weeks ago when I found the audio. And man, was I, I'm a giggle drunk. You are. You I are. am a giggle drunk. Yeah. <laughs> I still remember. <laughs> we may have to reboot one of those. Yeah. Maybe this holiday season. We'll have to talk the about that. Of. The best of. There you go. That would be fantastic. But we were talking in the first segment about the different things that you do within your job. You're mm-hmm. not always in the patrol car out roaming the highways and the byways mm-hmm. and the side streets of our communities. You're also teaching other law enforcement officials. You're teaching prosecutors, court systems, things like that about what you do and why you do it and how you do it. Testifying before the subcommittee at the House of Delegates. I remember that. Before the hands-free bill finally passed. I've gotten to do quite a few things, and I'm nothing short of appreciative to be allowed some of the things we've done. But on the other side, Janet, we have so much more, so Mm -hmm. much more that needs to be done. We still have too many people that are perishing needlessly on the roadways. And so when we get in the conversations and especially the the social media realm where, where people talk about traffic enforcement, you know, just it's a money grab. It's big brother, Road pirates, land sharks. I mean, you, you know, I, I've heard most of them, and, and a lot of them I can't say here, but I guess I could because you can bleep it out. You <laughs> Do know. you know, last week, two so weeks if ago, I, say, I had my very first recording in advance that I did have to bleep. Did you? I, my very first bleep. I had to figure out how to do it, but on the radio it was bleeped on the podcast. I didn't bother. <laughs> well, I can tell you, for those folks that truly believe that, I'm not going to say there hasn't been, that there still may not be, or that there won't in the future be a few assholes. There. Did you bleep that? I I hope you did. (laughs) That have gotten a badge and a gun, right? And it's like any other profession. You've had doctors who have done things they shouldn't do to or against patients. You've had teachers, politicians, clergy. You had any walk of life and form of employment, positions of trust where Mm -hmm. people have abused it. I'm not saying that that doesn't and can't and still won't sadly happen when it comes to law enforcement. But for the most part, and I mean the most part, most law enforcement personnel are out here doing the job they are supposed to do, doing it the way they're supposed to do it, and being polite, courteous, and professional when they do it. And so to just take this blank check and try to write it or the or the broad stroke of a paintbrush and try to paint all of us in a certain light, you can say what you like when it comes to traffic enforcement and traffic stops. But generally in most, most at least medium to small town areas, you're going to find that there are more people being injured and or losing their lives as the result of traffic crashes than are due to violent crimes or domestics, even sometimes someone taking their own life. So when you think about it from that standpoint, I I hope that you can appreciate why people, especially, and I include myself in this because now, I mean, when I first started, Janet, you know, I told the story about growing up with an alcoholic father and and I've lost two different relatives to DUI-related incidents. And I've told that story since I started But when I first started, that was the basis of, Mm -hmm. here's why I think it's important. Well, now I can tell you I have 27 years. In October, I start my 28th year. I have time and experience doing this job, seeing what I've seen, continue to see what I see, and know that we truly can do better. And so it, it is. It's a mission for me, and I'm going to keep making traffic stops as long as I possibly can. And for those that that I can give a warning to and feel that that warning is is going to be enough, I'll do that. But for others who get a summons or have to come to court and face 
the consequences of their actions, I'm going to continue to do it, and I'm going to sleep well at night. I've told more than one person in the back of my cruiser, crying and upset, cussing me, whatever the case may be, that I'd much rather have you back there in the shape you are now, facing what you've got to face to get through, than to be knocking on your family's door or knocking on someone else's door, telling that family that someone has died as a result of your actions tonight. So when it comes to the traffic safety aspect and the traffic enforcement, it's not. You're going to have a few of those out there who may abuse their authority to a degree or come across with an attitude that is not respectful or even professional or appropriate. But for the most part, if you just do the right thing, number one, you're not going to have to worry about the stop. But if you don't, then during the stop, just yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, provide whatever information, sign whatever you need to sign. And if you want to argue, come to court and argue That's it. That's where the forum is to argue. But it's still going to be, it's it's important. And, and there's a difference in, in some of the safety issues, I'll admit, when we have somebody that's 100 miles an hour versus someone who has a registration that expired three months ago. Right. A compliance issue, though, are important as well. And in this type of society, if 90% of us are paying our way, whether we agree with it or not, we're right. paying our way, then that other 10%, you need to pay your way as well. And if, if you're having troubles, that's one thing. But when you've got the the Starbucks coffee, you got the iPhone 16 uh, and are other you, goodies. Are you calling me out here? I'm sitting here looking to my right is my. <laughs> yeah. But if you have I that stuff and you're saying, I can't afford to get my right. my tags renewed, then, then that comes down to priorities. So, yeah, I'm happy and I'm pleased to be where I am now. And as I said when this show airs, I will have started, you know, <laughs> I, October 2nd is the date that I went into the Academy, October 2nd, 1997. And you don't sit here and say any of these things without that that 28 years of experience, that 27 and 99 percent years of experience. Last month when we were talking about the fatality that happened near Stonewall Elementary School, that was, I think you said your 19th, 19th. notification. Yes. So you, 19 of those in 27, 28 years seems crazy big, a crazy big number to me. So when you're sitting here saying these things, it's not like you haven't walked the walk. And those don't count the ones where I was with someone else who gave the notification or we gave notifications for a person who perished out of state in a crash, and we were just given notification here. These are just the people that I myself gave notification to, to the crashes I were directly involved in. And, and to anyone that says, well, that's not even one a year, it's obviously it wasn't a member of your of family. Your family. So. A lot of these scenarios are 100% preventable. When you're talking about weather-related conditions, we've had so many conversations about how you should be driving when there's snow on the ground, what to do when you have ponding water mm -hmm. on the roadways. If you just stop and take into account your ability, your car's ability, you could prevent having A, a crash, or B, driving too fast, doing any of these other things, and you wouldn't even have to enter into the equation at all. Two things that I think lend now to some of the devastating crashes that we are seeing. One, overconfidence. Overconfidence in either yourself or, like you said, the vehicle's ability. Vehicles have come a long way. Safety improvements have come a long way. But they're not 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're no replacement for common sense. I mean, I drive a four-wheel drive vehicle. That does not mean <laughs> that I can, well, it does sometimes, park where I shouldn't park or drive on roads that I know I'm not capable of driving on, whether that four-wheel drive can handle it or not. And the other thing here, along with the overconfidence in either your ability or the vehicle's ability, is the overall thought that it won't happen to me. Uh -huh. Or not thinking about the outside influences. When you're going to do something, remember, you could be doing everything right. You could be driving along even after having a couple of beers, a mixed drink or two, or partaking with the new legalized form of, of cannabis. But when that other person does something wrong coming towards you, and your reaction time has been slowed by what you've now taken, maybe you're not impaired. Maybe you're not at the 08. 
but it's just enough that you weren't able to react. And people will say, well, okay, well, it wasn't my fault. Does that do you any good if you're the one that doesn't survive? Right. Or you're the one that ends up in a hospital with massive medical bills and all of these other things that could happen. So when it comes to the weather stuff, my thing has always been, how important is it for you to be where you think you need to be? And if you're trying to get home, all right, it doesn't really change it. Although we have responsibilities at home. Maybe we have children at home. Maybe we have children we have to pick up to get home. There there are all kinds of other things that can be added in. The bottom line comes down to what happens at home or to the kids that you need to pick up to get home or whatever the situation if you don't make it there at all. Ever. So no more than one path. We've seen a lot about the flooding here. Mm -hmm. And there are just some areas down in, in... in Carolina and Tennessee where Asheville's cut off. Yeah. You know, so There's it's no like getting in, getting out. Yeah. So it, it, it's like that. That's a different kind of creature we're talking about. Do you know, Google has already removed highway 40 yeah. from yeah. their map system. Yeah. That section anyway. I mean, it was all orange and red the other night. Cause I, I was already checking it out and seeing, okay, there is absolutely no way to get in there by road. You know, there might be some little small back road somewhere, but if the major roads aren't getting through, the back roads aren't because they're going to dip down somewhere as well. But I can tell you that if you only know one way to and from a certain destination, one of your regular destinations, you know, the grocery store, the hospital, your home, your mm-hmm. work, branch out, learn more than one route. So when you have that weather-related situation, when you have the low water bridge, when you have the snow that's drifted over one of the roadways and you can't get by, you know another way to get around it, hopefully. that That's one of the things I would say. It's also helpful when you get caught up in an accident that maybe you're not involved in when you're caught up in a crash. Thank you. I'm going to edit all that out. When you're, caught, <laughs> <laughs> when you're caught up in a crash that's maybe a mile ahead of you and you're stuck yeah. there, if knowing those alternate routes lets you off on a side road so you're not sitting there for another hour and a half, two hours. And, and, and the bottom line is, even if you are going to have to sit, if it's something that's not crushingly important, then just sit. Make a few phone calls. You know, Somebody will take care of whatever needs to take care of. So we've got about a minute and a half before we have to wrap up. Halloween is coming. Yeah, just ha- keep in mind, year. some of the some of the localities are going to be celebrating Halloween on different evenings. Mm-hmm. So, so know your immediate area, what's going to be the day and time that, that they're looking to have it. If you're traveling outside your area, maybe keep that in mind. Most of the time, I, th- I think people are cautious. But anymore, I mean, kids are so unpredictable. Right. God bless them, and, and I want them to have as much candy as they can haul. <laughs> but but sometimes they're not listening to mom and dad. They're crossing the street before they should or where they shouldn't. And so that that's one of the, the holidays. You know, we talk about St. Patrick's Day, July 4th, Labor Day, the drinking holidays. Yeah, Thanksgiving, Christmas. But Halloween is the kids' holiday that, that I try to remind everybody because we wait till dark to do it in most instances. Right. The, the kids are already sampling the sugar, or maybe they're like that anyway, Mom <laughs> and Dad. Welcome to my cul-de-sac. But, yeah, just keep that in mind and, and know what's going on. And once you know it's happening, extra caution. Be extra, aware. extra. We'll be back live in November, Woo-hoo. I think, right? I Should believe. Be. Okay. Awesome. Well, I hope you have a fantastic time in Talladega, and I hope you teach those people in Richmond a thing or two about how we do stuff in the Shenandoah Valley. (laughs) I'm going to teach them something, all right. (laughs) Well, thank you for coming in to meet up with me today. I will be back tomorrow with a brand new episode of The Valley Today, so meet me back here for that just a few minutes after noon.